All right, my friends, we're going to get through re reconstruction and redemption here. And at the last lecture, we were talking about the growing rift between President Johnson, Republican leaders in Congress. And if you have to think of Johnson and his approach to reconstruction, uh, there's one phrase he said, quote, the Constitution as it is and the Union as it was. That's really all you have to think about when you think about Johnson. He's okay with the 13th Amendment, but the 14th, 15th, not really his jam. Sorry, uh, every time, right? Anyway, Congress took control of Reconstruction policy in early 1867 while Johnson was seeking allies within the White South. And in the end, Johnson alienated so much of the Republican Party that he was impeached and placed on trial and just barely avoided removal from office in the spring of 1868. Does that sound familiar? Oh, yeah. hmm. Well, nevertheless, Congress moved to impeach Andrew Johnson in February of 1868. The House impeached him and the Senate, uh, the House impeaches and the uh, Senate convicts under the Constitution. That's the way it works. And moderate Republicans didn't like this. And they said that the only thing that Johnson was guilty of was being annoying. Uh, he had not broken the law. It, they didn't like him. They didn't wish he was there, but he hadn't broken a law. And Johnson gave Congress a pretext for impeachment in late 1867 uh, and starts removing uh, generals who were supporting black rights. Uh, so in April, I'm sorry, not April, uh, February 24th, 1868, along with the, along a straight party line, the House voted to impeach Johnson. The vote was 126 to 47. Uh, Reconstruction, though, is proceeding along the, in the South while Congress and Johnson were sparring back and forth. Uh, Southern African Americans, along with white Republicans, created powerful political organization for the Republican Party, in addition to registering voters. Uh, there were constitutional conventions going on. Uh, delegates to these conventions were about three quarters Republicans, and nearly half of the delegates were what are called scalawags, white Southerners who had been Unionists during the war and who were now in sympathy with Reconstruction and the Republican Party. Probably a term you've heard of, right? And the presidential election of 1868, for an example, uh, demonstrated how things might go in the South, uh, even though the Republican candidate, former general, Ulysses S. Grant, won the election. The victory wasn't without conflict, violence even, uh, all throughout. But uh, still, after the ele election, uh, Republicans turned to the issues of black suffrage. 11 of 21 northern states still denied the vote to African-American men, and this was supposed to be rectified by the 15th Amendment, which made it unconstitutional to deny anyone the vote on the basis of race or previous condition of servitude, i.e. slavery. Many people view the 15th Amendment as the last step in Reconstruction. I thought uh, the work was going to be done, and it would be time to move on. In fact, the New York Times in 1870 said, quote, let us have done with Reconstruction. The country is sick and tired of us. Let us have peace. Oh, sorry, I meant to click that earlier. See the image there. But of course, the reality was that white Southerners, many white Southerners at least, uh, did not think Reconstruction would be over until Republicans were out of power, African Americans could no longer participate in the political process, and they turned to increasingly violent means to bring an end to Reconstruction. So of course, the Ku Klux Klan, who you're familiar with, is a prototype for terrorist groups that sprung up across the South, uh, the KKK was organized in 1866 by some young men in Tennessee. Initially, mostly a, a social club, this members quickly can uh, turn to violence. There was other clubs, Knights of the White Camellia, etc., spread throughout the South. Uh, radical wings of the Democratic Party, and. U.S. Grant, though, at the urging of uh, at the Grant. Um, urged Congress to uh, 
strike uh, early in the 1870s with a series of laws, the Enforcement Acts, to protect African-Americans throughout the South. And they made it a crime to interfere with a person's right to vote. They placed elections under surveillance by election supervisors and marshals. And African-Americans never dominated Southern politics. And across the South, they held 10 to 15% of the state offices, even at the height of Reconstruction. Uh, they elected just 16 members in the Congress, uh, 14 to the House, two to the Senate. And apparently four of those men sent to Congress had attended college, which was not true of so many of their white contemporaries in Congress. Uh, carpetbaggers, scalawags, very loaded terms, very negative. Uh, carpetbaggers uh, were Northerners who went south after the Civil War and functioned as Republicans. Scalawags were native white Southerners who supported the Republican Party and Reconstruction. Many of them were Unionists before and during the war, as we mentioned, as I mentioned just a little bit ago. And these then uh, saw a future for the South in industry, education, progress, uh, just a along the lines of the uh, Republican Party as a whole that had been putting uh, forth this uh, message throughout the United States. Uh, but on the whole, these Republican governments uh, compiled a credible record and they made advances in statewide education. I'm sorry, we should be there again. Uh, education systems were much better for them, uh, rebuild the infrastructure, judicial reforms, anti god discrimination laws, and now we'll do this. But over time, it became more or less impossible for white Southerners to remain Republican. Uh, they were seen as turncoats, we'll say, traitors, shunned by neighbors, ostracized, and this was difficult for many people in the long run. And along comes what is called redemption. And there were tensions within the Republican Party together with extreme hostility in the air uh, caused the party to fracture in elements. And between 1869 and 64, seven states were, quote, redeemed. That means they were returned to state democratic rule. In 1871, Congress passed the KKK Act, which gave the president the power to impose martial law in areas where the Klan and other such groups were wreaking havoc. The election of 1872, though, saw a realignment of political parties and the perception across the North that re Reconstruction should maybe end, and there was a perception that Reconstruction and Grant were corrupt, created this movement in the Republican Party to get rid of Grant. But Republicans began to falter in the years following Grant's re-election. And in spite of signs in the 1872 election, uh, this quickly showed that the North was losing its commitment to Reconstruction. And many white Northerners believed that they had done everything within reason to guarantee freedom. African Americans. Uh, again, and, and now there were more charges of corruption, especially in Louisiana, actually, uh, began to create growing contempt for re uh, Republican and Reconstruction policies. And then there was a panic of 1873, which brought some extreme economic dislocations at the North uh, and also hurt the Republican Party. Uh, Midterm elections of 1874 saw Republicans lose control of the House to Democrats for the first time in 18 years. And Massachusetts, which was a Republican stronghold, a Democrat was actually elected governor. So Republicans saw these factors as evidence that people wanted to be done with Reconstruction. So the party then began to just kind of back away from their pro-Reconstruction rhetoric and policies. And in the South, white Democrats began to be, well, they just became more aggressive in fighting against Reconstruction government and policies. And it was what's called the Mississippi Plan. 70, I'm sorry, 1875, uh, white Democrats in Mississippi initiated this plan, which got rid of the last remaining parts of Republican Reconstruction. Uh, voters of governments, uh, 
Reconstruction voters and governments through violence. Uh, there was social pressure on white Republicans in Mississippi, uh, intimidation of black voters. Uh, the Ku Klux Klan was not in any way suppressed. Uh, riots, like in uh, Vicksburg, when 35 African Americans died in these uh, riots. Uh, the election of 1876, though, and the compromise of 1877 saw the end of Reconstruction. And there we go. Samuel J. Tidnell and Ruthard B. Hayes. Uh, Tidnell run, won all the northern states that he needed to win. He seemed to have won the election. Uh, seems that he may have won the popular vote as well. Um, the outcome was unclear because returns from the three states still in Republican control, which were, as you can see here, Louisiana, Florida, and South Carolina, where these votes were up in doubt, and there was widespread accusations of fraud. But if Hayes carried these three, he would win the Electoral College. I don't really know who won that election exactly, but um, there was a commission, there was a vote, uh, and they decided eight to seven that Hayes had won the election. And so the compromise of 1877 ended, this crisis ended uh, Reconstruction. Uh, some of the points of this compromise was that uh, Hayes would be allowed to be president. He would support improvements throughout the South. He would put Southerners in his cabinet. I think he elected someone to be like postmaster or something. Uh, he would allow Louisiana and South Carolina to pass into democratic hands. And he requested that black voting rights or black, vi black rights in general, civil rights, be respected. So as white Democrats returned to power, they restored white supremacy throughout the South and this system of segregation, apartheid took shape and would remain intact throughout the, uh, through the, uh, until the eight, 1960s. Uh, and so for this reason, re Reconstruction is generally seen as a failure. But what the federal government does during this time is it at least gets this set of laws and amendments on the books. And those laws would provide the legal framework for the civil rights movement of the 20th century. Thank you all for listening. And we'll meet again soon.